All right, are you ready? Sure. Are you ready, Juan? <coughs> yes, I'm going to. Okay, get... if everybody can have a seat, we'll go ahead and start this. I'm going to get by on right now. So I'll call up the order. We'll start with said allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here's it. How long will you give them? They get three minutes to talk. That's it. All right. Okay. okay. The way this works is when we get to the to the, the line items is, is for the budget, then you can ask questions. Right? You have three minutes apiece. Rob, <coughs> <Okay>. four. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Do you want to talk for three minutes? Yeah. For three whole minutes? <laughs> That's a long time to talk, but I do have a lot of questions to ask. I don't know if... We don't, we don't respond to questions. Daryl, citizens, comments. No, it's just for y'all to ask those questions. This is a public hearing. This isn't a citizen's yeah. conference. Right. Well, According to our attorney, we still have to allow you to speak three minutes to talk if you have any. Now, we cannot answer any questions until we get to that line item. Um, so, this is so anybody have anything to say until right now before we get to the line item? Can we ask questions at the line item? No, yes, once you get to the line item. Um, but you're not going to answer the questions. Well, they can. This isn't public comment. He's talking about public comment, which is a totally different deal than proper tools of order. Right. Okay. Well, I so we need a clear understanding of what the actual rules say. This is a public hearing. That's the point of a public hearing for all public no, entities all that are Texas in. According to our hearing, we can have everything together. If we don't get to any of our, uh, our uh, um, going right into our meeting, then we can't. So this that's why this is all ahead of everybody. This is our public hearing right now. So Charlie said that they can have three minutes if they want to talk. Now we go to this one right here. We'll discuss the budget. Then they can ask questions about the budget. Now we do not have to answer them, no. but we can take their questions. So it's not a public hearing. That's, that's not the way it's a public hearing. Y'all know that. It is. And it's not. No, it's not. You know that's not true. No, it's not. That's not the one. You know that this is. Whether it's, whether it's school district, city council, other pub. Sir, I've been in the industry for many years. We do not answer questions at public hearings or in citizen comments. It's for y'all to ask the board questions, and we can take those questions into consideration as far as any actions we take. But it's not for us to answer your questions. Not true when you're talking to tax rates that affects taxpayers. That's not true. How come a board member's not calling the attorney in instead of an employee? That's an employee. One of y'all should be calling the attorney, not, a, not an employee. Uh, I would like to start off with a question. When did you uh, cease operations with the contract company? We do I know? October 1st. October 1st. I take my biggest concern since I have three minutes. Well, the, I, I, he's the president and our vice president not here, so if, if we're going to take citizen comments, you need to, sort of like the city council, you need to come address the board, say your name, you know, this is my first and then, okay, so you, you get up or you at least stand, you say your name, you, then you can go into your three minutes because we had to start timing you. Uh, and then at your three minute end, we'll tell you three minutes are over or you finish before them. Okay. But we should have had a sign up list. We did. Okay. okay. So, uh, so, going into our uh, citizen comments, our first person signed up is Diana Rayburn. Okay. Rayburn, I'm sorry. Oh, so, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. so we're not going to wait for the president now? Oh, no, we are. <laughs> yeah. We'll keep changing the rules. 
No, there is no rules. <laughs> There's not rules in regards to... And, and, a, and also in a public hearing one, it's supposed to be a sign-up sheet for questions on the public hearing. This is not citizens' comments. Citizens' comments come at your 7 o'clock regular scheduled meeting for it's those 12 public hearings, sir. Right, but you're calling those citizens' comments. Those aren't citizens' well, comments. There's still comments to the public hearing. Correct. Public hearing. Correct. Oh, it's a waste of time here. Exactly. It's just a waste of time. Two different things, one. You it's not two different things. They're both citizen comments. One is to a public hearing, one is to, to the agenda. How do we remove you from the board? Uh, you gotta get my board members to remove me. It's okay, for, for our attorney, y'all can ask all the questions in the world. We don't have to answer. You don't have to. You don't have to. That's the key. Well, you don't, don't have, have to. to. You can't, right? You don't have to. Right? If you say you can't or you do don't have to. know the answer? Mm -hmm. Do you not know the answer? Well, they haven't heard the question. question. Yeah. I have the answer to most of the questions. So you're a comment. Well, yeah, but, but I'm, no, but I'm <laughs> well, Let's not be rude. I mean, I'm glad you said what you said because your attorney told you the truth. You do not have to answer anything. But you are legally allowed yeah. to answer questions. Well, let, let me start. I am first on the list, but I'm going to start anyway. Let's just know. So if you want to go ahead and yeah, start. Well, but. Yeah, no, go ahead. I, it doesn't make any difference for my <laughs> I read outside where on a post in there that, that the citizens of ESV number four have spoken. What did they say? These folks haven't said a say in anything. Uh, this came about. We didn't know that you were going to tax us or raise our taxes until they came out in the paper the other day. And uh, we wanted to ask, number one, why, but it's already been decided. You've already fired the contract uh, company. You've already hired new people, which I might mention. I'd like to have one of them jobs. And you bought new equipment, all at the uh, at the expense of the taxpayers who had no input. So that's my main concern: is you're uh, adding, you're you're raising the taxes. I, I don't know how much you get from the sales tax. Is it on here? This is crazy. Okay, so we're going into closed session. Okay. To call the meeting. You can't well, haven't called the meeting to order yet. This is the public hearing form. That's before the regular meeting. You can't go into closed session during public hearing. You can't go into public hearing, not a public meeting, guys. We can't do things illegally. I know the rules. You're wrong. Right. This is a public you can call the public hearing, guys. Why is the attorney here? Exactly. Mr. Campbell, they called the public meeting, the public hearing to order, not the public meeting. The public meeting is set for 7 o'clock. Now we're getting the stating it was going to close the meeting. Where is it posted that you can go and close the meeting under the public hearing? Where is the agenda? That has to be on your yeah. agenda. It doesn't have to be. Who's asking for the agenda? They say, they say, they say, they say, they say, they say, you're welcome. Call the sheriff's department. Call the sheriff's department, sir. Let's call the laws now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy we have a county commissioner here listening. You guys are supposed to have people going back. Yeah. We'll take a look at this. We'll take a look at this. You can't tell the news. If you're doing something illegal, George, I promise you. We can't go into a little session. I'll call up here and get it. I would also like to ask I'd also like to ask them uh, how much do you have in your reserve funds and uh, how much do you get from the sales tax in the area and was there not $700,000 in money market and CDs back four years ago? Is that gone? These are just employees. Just, just questions. Uh, Since they can't answer, Jerry, I pulled up their basic financial statements from their audit in 2020. Let's see, what is this one? Oh, that's it. It's online here, the audit's report. Let's see what's here. This one is ending September 30th, 2023. And it says in their assets that they had final balance as of September 30th. They had net change and balance and then 
fund balance beginning October 1st, 589,677. And then with their you know other stuff here, final balance September 30th, 723,100. It showed that they had cash on hand, $347,652, investments, $352,418. Uh, taxes received at that time was 55,131. Allowance for uncollectible taxes, negative 565,013. And dues from others, 123,660 for total access so the 773,354. And then they had a little bit of liabilities of $601. Uh, unavailable revenue from property taxes, I don't know what that means, unavailable revenue. 49,615 and so that's what they came from there. Uh, well, one, of the, one of the things that uh, caught my attention is the the fact that you're, you're going to go up and, and I hate to use number 57 percent because that kind of puts a negative light on it but you're going to go up on the taxes. Uh, there's other entities within the county that are going to go up on taxes as well and for those of us that are living on a fixed income and who probably use this service more than anybody it's going to drain us uh, you know those of us that have worked all our lives and retired and <coughs> kind of comfortably now if if we call ems uh, on top of paying more taxes for it we're going to have to pay more for it and you're serving might as well be talking to a wall but you're serving the people that you serve are the older folks who are living on Medicare and Social Security and things of that nature, and it's it's no benefit to them whenever they have to pay more taxes for a service they got to pay for as well. So, but you're you're telling two people that don't vote to do that. Well, and what amazes me is a drive to the ER on Darkmore and 35. You know, it's a jump from here, thousands of dollars on top of what insurance covers. I just don't know where the Medina County ESD number four people are who have spoken. I don't understand why they ESD hear. member board members aren't elected like everybody. They're appointed. They are, they're, no, they're I didn't vote for any of They're appointed by the county. Well, but that's not the same as being elected. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's your direction. Exactly. Just pick who you want up here. That's not the same as us electing you. Yeah. You're supposed to be a servant of us, we the people of Medina County. And then folks need to go to the county commissioner meeting and complain to the county commissioners who will receive the ESDs. And that's why it's good that one's here listening to all this and watching the room. Not like when they were looking for somebody, they were looking for another member. Yeah, there's somebody who's in the process. 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 This district that everybody's on the board? Yes. Yes. That's yes. right. It's a requirement to be on the board. Good. Good. Thank you. So I can tell you what I know that I've looked up. Christy sent me a contract from Allegiance, and Allegiance is contracted at um, $212,000 a year. Um, and they are to provide two 24 hour ambulances to our district. And what I uh, understand, and they put in their press read, there's one in Divine, the other one goes to Natalia. It is still 24 hours, and then I verified, even with this Natalia fireman sitting back here, that ambulance stays over there in that crew, and at nighttime they come and they sleep up here and they come out of here. So we have two 24 hour ambulances. Now, what I've seen in press releases and and comments or emails to Tony and Christy is that that's also what they want to provide is two 24 hour ambulances. It might see you on them both in. The only thing in, in the private contractor is they have in theirs that they'll backfill. You know, like I don't remember all this private contract. They have all over the place, like Allegiance Cash. Real. They have a contract in Pearsall and um, used to have ones are all over Bear County. <coughs> anyway, so they backfill when one of when ours go out so that we're never without ambulance too. Right. They'll backfill. But if we go private, then we don't have that availability. We have to hope that somebody from Pearsall or Castorial, San Antonio, wherever, can mutual aid us. And so that's, that's one difference I've noted, um, which is huge to me. 
Um, and then if Pearsall has three and they're they're out and down the one, do you think they're sending one? No, they're not. It's in their contract. They're not. They're not going to vacate their own citizens for another one. Also in the in the contract with Legions is they can and peak out and peak problems can send. They will send more people. So there's those huge differences. Okay, so we're going to review and discuss and adopt the district's 24-25 fiscal year budget. Well, did everybody decided they didn't want to come? No, no, we have citizens coming. I'm just going to quit. So, which one do you want to Yes, I probably took it to get the one. Yeah, I have a form here. Let me take the form. Three. Tell me if you do comment. Answer questions. Answer questions for all. Well, that's not true. It's not true. That is not true. Yeah, disregard us. That's exactly what you guys are doing. It's totally disregarding us. That hasn't worked for you anywhere you've been, Juan. You know, and if I could say something real quick. No, you can't, sir. There you go. Thank you. We are in session. Let's go. Tell me, tell me, you and I had a closed session prior to a posted long meeting at 7 o'clock, which is illegal. I just want you to know that. You went prior to your post at 7 o'clock closing me. He must be your attorney then, because he's giving you legal advice, which is against the law also. Yes, they can do it to citizens. You, you can start late. Right? You can also start early. Tony. Okay. Does anybody have any comments? We'll go down, get down the list. Diane, do you have anything to say? I do. Um, okay. you got three minutes. My feeling is that it would be less expensive for us to keep a in place rather than start up a new EMS service. Uh, you see, upstart cost is outrageous, and then the cost of all the directors and the medical director and the paramedics and the drugs and the equipment. It's, it's, well, I, I don't understand at what point will it be cost effective for us to have our own service. It's going to be years before we can recapture those dollars. In my opinion, I have no, you know, that's that's the only thing that I object to. I'm sorry, I can't say the first name. Brown? Claude. Yeah. Claude? Yes. Do you have anything to talk? It's your turn to talk, Sam. Okay. Um, the question I have is you project to uh, income on the EMS revenue from. Um, medical insurance and social security on your runs that you make is that where the 1.680 million dollars come from they said they're not going to answer any questions i know i know you got a hearing aid so yeah. <laughs> well, let him know i'm writing down okay that's fine but keep asking Hmm? Keep asking all you want. You got three minutes. Well, um, yeah, I'm I'm with her. <laughs> Y'all have a sweetheart deal with the legions. No headaches. They do all the runs and everything. And uh, now you're going into employees, maintenance, equipment maintenance, and whatnot. And I don't know if that projected figure is correct. But let's hope so. Otherwise, you'd be asking us for more money all the time. Mr. Beck? Yes, I got another question. Oh, I got three minutes. Good. 
The other company was terminated October the 1st of what, last year? Will be. Oh, will be terminated, I'm sorry. What are they doing so wrong that we have to terminate them and spend uh, probably five times the money on starting our own little club? Why is it why is it better to do away with the service that provides everything we need? And uh, is it just a keep up with Casterville type deal? We want to be like them? Uh, I think it's asinine on your part. Uh, I had a couple more questions, but uh, Tony asked me a while ago. Probably illegal. <laughs> uh, is it Eric Smith? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just, I mean, I know all four of you, well, three out of four in the Bible, they all live here. Toby's been around a long time, did a great job, and he worked for the Bible MS. George is my exterminator, I know Mr. Zamora, and of course, okay. with decisions come emotions and come words, and the bottom line is, is the other strain that this does is on the school board president, Natalia, and we've made sure that we've lowered taxes eight out of the last 10 years. Why? Because we can't control appraised values, but what we can control is our taxes. And I promise you, because I spoke to every city council member, is when it was asked for land and Natalia to be donated, not one city council member was made aware that in turn you were going to go and raise everybody's taxes, including every city council member that lives in your district who voted yes and had no clue what was coming in the back door. And I think that's a slap in the face to all five of those city council members and that mayor, and I think it's a really bad business on your part, 110%. And I think it's also really bad business to trust anybody that will tell you that it is okay and legal to go behind closed doors in closed session with an attorney prior to a 7 p.m. call meeting, which is posted, as you posted on your door, not signed by anybody, which is two wrongs. So no matter who told you it was legal, it's not legal to go in closed session prior to a 7 p.m. call meeting. You can start a meeting late by law, you cannot start a meeting early by law. And anybody that's been in public office, especially as long as one of your board members, should know better. And I think it's a bad decision, and I think you're gonna have a room full of folks at the county commissioner meeting, and I respect each of the time that you do because I know from being on the board for 19 years we get shit on a lot more than we get complimented. But I also know that we've learned in Italian the more transparent we are, the more we ask for feedback and advice, the easier it is for people to support you. And I think we're doing this back this year. I believe it's the actual hours. Lower, lower. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm not really a question, it's just a more comment about the transparency. I don't know. I didn't know anything about it either until we read through the newspaper about the tax hike. Um, exactly. Is there anything y'all could have done better to make it more transparent instead of doing it like this? Yep. <laughs> public hearing where we can get questions answered. You know. If you go to the county commissioner's public hearing, you get questions answered. You go to a school board meeting, you go to a city council meeting, you go to any school district you're allowed to. And you're a taxing public entity in the state of Texas. So your attorney is 150% wrong. And you need to find a new one. I promise you, Mr. Martin. This is a county commissioner who runs meetings, guys. They have public hearings every year. I know he is. I know Dan is. And you're a good guy, Tony. He's a good guy. I've known him a whole lot. Is it Miss Real? Are you any questions? My time is very bad. You can't do that. Can't do that. Yes, but you, yes, you can. Jerry, she's giving you your three. Minutes. Okay, what is the what is the tax rate that you have already voted in and are going to put on the taxpayers? That's public information, so you have to answer. That's on the deal. Do you have an agenda? Jerry? No, let's go. Okay, the tax rate 0.075785 per 100. Okay. 0785. And that was going to fund new equipment, positions, and things of that nature. So you put them in place before you fund them? Don't make any sense either. It's my opinion. But I, I would grant you that if this was put to a vote, uh, you'd be scrambling to send some of that stuff back and call the legions and tell them that uh, we want you back. 
but they've already been notified that they're going to be terminated. You've already budgeted this amount for these positions and this equipment, yet you haven't passed, right? You haven't passed the tax rate that's going to fund it. And uh, I do believe that that statement out there that says the red of the people of PSC number four has spoken, I think that's incorrect. Maybe four or five people that you talk to if you ain't you know, talking to the right people. Okay. Uh, KK Callum, been sure all my life. I also have publisher of Divine News, uh, fight for transparency. Inland service is very vital and important to our community. As you all know, that's why you are here. That's why you care. Many of you in the audience are volunteer EMTs. They am paramedics during the day, bank sales, your parents, your grandparents, whatever to make, make it needs. Uh, put gas in the, in the ambulances to build this building. It was all built by volunteer paramedics. You know, it, it's the heart of the community. It's very important to us. And so, so when come ESD time, then um, people voted it in. It wasn't easy to get a ta another taxing entity, but the people said, okay, okay, we need it, but don't take advantage of us. Be good stewards of our tax money. And so each one, um, they voted in. Fire and EMS throughout the county. And so uh, I watched the whole process. I remember all those old people, they're in their 90s, 100s, or not, not here anymore. Anyway, and so I've seen the transitions. I've seen City Divine try to survive with the ambulance service, and even Tony at one point was a director and knows, and it's tough making collections. It's tough, tough to make, make a profit. So then it went to Medina Valley, EMS, and Casterville, and then they were all over the county, and that ended up in investigations and a disaster. Then it came back to here, and they had private contractors saying, we'll never be in our EMS business again. It just doesn't work. Well, here we are again. Now we want to be in it again for some reason. Not really sure. So we go from being two hundred thousand dollar counter for two nineteen, two twenty, whatever, to now um, several million. And for what? So my question is, what what is, what more are we getting for our two million dollar budget instead and instead of our one hundred forty eight thousand or two hundred forty eight thousand, whatever it is. You know, what more are we getting? I understand from Tony and Christy that in the questions I've got answered in return, we're getting two ambulances, 20 hours a day with MICU units with paramedics and, and EMTs. Well, that's exactly what Allegiance provides for $212,000 or 220. I'm getting two different numbers from people. And so now we're going to a several million budget and we know how to collect now. It's the collections are even easier now. We live in a poor community, a poor area of South Texas, and you know we're going to be building the same people that are paying the taxes that can already, they're already in financial problems. So I don't understand the logic behind it. I, if it's the way to go in the future, well then let us know why and how and what you plan on doing, not just here it is, we want more money, believe in us, trust us. I want to, but I'm not seeing the same in return. When press releases tell me, oh, we only have one ambulance in the line, a 24-hour ambulance, and I investigate, and I ask the company, and I ask firemen, is that ambulance in tight, really 24-hour, are they really staying here? Yes, they are. We are really providing two, but your press release is worded in a way politically to make it sound it isn't, but now we're going to with the new ambulance service. I'm very disappointed in that. I don't like misleading things. It makes me not want to trust. And I want to trust you guys. I grew up a paramedic. I grew up with the whole town of pyramids. I watched them. I watched them. I watched you all. Then side by side it calls. I get it. They're very important. They need to be paid for their service. But are we rushing it to do this and to try to build a new building at the same time? Is it needed? Show us that it's needed. Show us the run calls. Show us that we're having to use other services. And then it will be believable. Don't just jump off the cliff and tell us you're going to pay for it because you have to. And in this topic notice, I've read that even if y'all vote this right in, it can be petitioned to go to the voters. Read your own, read your own public notice. It can be petitioned. And if the voters say, no, we're not ready for this, no, we're not ready for the tax, it will go back to the approved tax rate, which is that five cents, not the 7.8. And I know you've bought ambulances, and you've rented them, or supplies, you've hired people, you're looking at, you know, you've got a huge 
three supervisor, 100,000 for the director, 90 for deputy director, whoever that be. Christy, I don't know if you're still the coordinator, and said 11,000, going to 65,000. Those are some nice pay scales, but all of that money, we, are, we already, if we used it for a service, we had ambulances, we had people. That's just for, for management now. So now we still have to have the ambulances and the people, and it, it just doesn't add up to me. And I, I don't understand why the transfer. Transfer is not here, not here. That's why these people are here. I guarantee you, I didn't call every one of these. There are people who are concerned. I've seen them at public meetings so far. And they all know their business. I asked for to receive the method of getting it on the ballot. So. I'm sorry, but I can't say the last name, but Anthony. Yeah. Now, what's the deadline to petition to reverse it? Candy. It says you can here. No answer? No. It should be on the thing that the, the statement came from the county. <laughs> what the, what the uh, procedure is to back it up? It'll have to be researched. Uh, Probably go online and find it pretty easy on the ESD. You can call the judge tomorrow and find it. On the ESD website. <laughs> I'm having my voice already, so I'll just wait. Mm -hmm. Linda? Is it Linda? Linda Young? Yes. I'd like to uh, give my time to Jerry Bass. <laughs> 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 well, I, I'm going to give most of my time to Jerry because I know well, he's well, probably I'll, done more research than me. Uh, but I, I'm going to speak. I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this building with my family. And you can't do what you say you're going to do. It ain't going to work. Go ahead, Jerry. Well, I checked with the uh, with the uh, the person that I believe knows what they're talking about, and we can petition for this to go back to five percent. It says it's got to be submitted to the governing body within ninety days of the tax rate adoption. If they're going to adopt it tonight, y'all plan it just right. Uh, we can petition after one. Well, yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, if the proposition fails, it, it'll stand. But if the majority of voters approve the proposition, the tax vote rate for the current year is reduced to the year to the voter approval, which would be the 5%. Uh, and it mentions here that the, uh, the governing body shall order an election to be held on the next uniform election date, usually in May. So we can get together, I can get together a petition in a day or two. No problem. I just have to get it worded correctly so that it passes muster with attorneys and we'll see if we can stop it. However, the EMS ESV number four in all its uh, grandeur has already adopted this tax rate. We're going to spend money like they've already got it. I don't know. If it, if it doesn't if it doesn't pass, you're going to be scrambling. And I think that, uh, like KK said, the other service was was more financially uh, beneficial to us, and this is definitely a hit at us financially, without any notice whatsoever that y'all were planning on doing this. And that, to me, in the vernacular of the layman, that sucks. Okay. Mr. Montgomery? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's real simple. There's, there's a plaque, a bronze plaque outside. And I didn't think about this until Ms. Gunn said it. But there's three people in this room that their name is on that bronze plaque outside. They had a lot to do with the building of this building, support, and, and just getting things done. It took a lot. And it's done today. And y'all probably don't even know who those three people in this room are. But what I'm trying to say, had this been approached a different way, other than a pompous, better than us position, not you, not you, are taking, is ridiculous and just fuels the fire. And, and that's the way it is. We're looking at a large, large problem coming up the road. It's been tried and it's failed. Had you had meetings and took public input from people, come out with a game plan that everybody liked and approved, you probably could have gotten something done, but you didn't. 
You took the back door, you snuck in and slammed the door and sit there. And when I say pompous, I'm talking about we can't answer questions. We can't do this. We can't. Why? It's not your money. It's our money. It's people out here that are living on a fixed income money. There's people out here that are living, you know, hand to mouth. And with the economy the way it is, it's getting worse. And yet, y'all are going to be feathering your nest. And like I said, I'll let it go, but I don't appreciate the pompous that I'm getting. This man is acting like an attorney. He is not an attorney that I know of. He cannot be giving you legal advice. That is literally against the law for him to do that. Telling you as a board what you can and can't do. That should send a signal to you. Now, I can guarantee you commissioner's court is going to be full the next commissioner's court meeting. And this is going to be the topic because this is ridiculous. Again, had you been open, had you been transparent, had you told us what you would like to do, you could have set a goal and we could have group-wise worked toward that goal and got it done. For the people that are in this room, there's probably 10 times as many that went, we can't do anything about it. They're not going to listen to us anyway, which proves that's what happened because you can't answer questions. In a public hearing, you can. I'm just telling you. There's three people in this room that are mayors, that are city councilmen, that are city administrators, that have done this. We've done what you've done. We've sat where you sat. And I never, in my 16 years as a city councilman in Divine, treated anybody like we're being treated as the public. And I'm ashamed of our commissioners. The y'all commissioners, I should say. They're not mine. They're yours. That have not did what should be done. So thank you for your time. And good luck. You're going to need it. I just have a problem with we're having a hearing. We're accomplishing nothing. Everybody's just airing out their yeah. And if they're going to have a hearing, then they should be able to answer questions. And we're just wasting a lot of time. Ms. Howard? Yeah. I'm one of those that was with the MS as a volunteer 35 years ago. That was the trained me. I met my husband. He was a volunteer fire department. I remember. He's on the ESB too tonight at a meeting. And. He put a lot of blood. His name's on this plaque outside, too. I want to know what part of our, you know, the tax rate is a nightmare. The tax issue is a nightmare for everybody here. What I want to know is what are the credentials and experience this board has individually and together to make decisions about our medical care? our medical responses and our medical bills. What is behind this decision that has anything to do with our health care? Because it's not going to improve. I guarantee you it is not going to improve. What does this group have in the way of medical billing experience, medical management experience? What do you have that can give us more than Allegiance has been giving us and that Pat Borsier has been giving us for decades. Somebody let me know, please. Convince me that this is going to be better. Is it Ms. Wilmot? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I came simply because I thought it was more of a public hearing and we could get answers. I had heard about it, knew nothing about it until I saw it in the paper and saw it on Facebook and shared that way. Um, I kind of echo what KK said, just learning. I thought that you guys would be able to provide some reason as to why the tax increase, how it is going to be more of an advantage to us than what we currently have, but apparently that's not the case. That what you guys have decided is done and what the people in the community have to say doesn't matter. Um, kind of like everyone else's voice, and I don't quite understand that and understand why you guys would think it's okay to do that without at least answering questions or Telling us why you think it's a better idea. If you would tell people things, we might be more aligned and help you follow along, not be so angry. So. He's 
besides everybody else's increase. And so, someone who lives on a fixed income, it makes it very difficult. Now she's 96, granted she probably won't be around for a few more years, but still it's, it's difficult. That goes for everybody. And if I could see a, a improvement in our service and, and everything, and y'all are putting in here that you're gonna get insurance reimbursement and billing of one million nine hundred something thousand, you know, Medicare, the government, everything else is cutting back on everything else. And how many of those people that are you're hauling everywhere, which I understand they need to care, have no insurance, are never going to pay, you'll never get that money. And so if you've already canceled the other service and committed to paying all of this building and EMS and everything else, and you don't get the money in, then you're just going to raise our taxes again and again and again until, like Ms. Moody said, you're going to price everybody out of their homes. And then you're not going to have any money anyway. So what are you going to do then? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't have any public comments. Thank you. Is it too late for me to put my name on there since I was late getting in there? Sorry. You can have right. time if you want. Go ahead. My name, my name is Mike Fernandez. I'm the one of the city councilmen that got slapped in the face by y'all with the property that we donated to for the building in Italia. <laughs> and it does feel like a slap in the face. It really does. And anybody here that knows me, that's not an easy chore to do. Uh, one of the questions that I have is is uh, the money that y'all are promising the director and the assistant director and stuff. Is, is there a set? number already or is that something that we're going to wait till y'all decide when to do that like this this meeting i mean i didn't know nothing about it. i was at a volleyball game when i got called um i'm kind of like mr smith the city of natalia has lowered their tax rate for the last i've been on that council for 20 years and we've tried to lower it every year so we can keep everybody in their house because of the appraisals are so high so the same thing the school does. We lower the taxes for that reason to keep our, our, our people in Natalia, which is 90% low income, to try to be able to keep stay in their house. So we add another tax, is that, is that the answer? Uh, I'm, I, I just don't understand. Was this talked about before we were approached to give that property to y'all? Or is this something afterwards? Or I, I'm not sure, like I said, I, I was at a volleyball game and I got a call and said, hey, maybe you better ease down there because nobody else uh, in the council's around. And, and, and I'm probably the easiest one to get along with. So uh, I, I just, that just, it just befuddled me because I don't, I don't understand what y'all are trying to do. I, I understand. I'm familiar with ESDs. I was in Southwest Fire Department when it became an ESD. So I understand that. I have a very good friend that's on the ESD 5 board in Bear County. I understand the need. 
but I don't understand by, by trying to bring it in through the back door. That, that's not good. It's not good neighbors. So you, with what I would suggest before y'all vote to do this is to have another public hearing somewhere where there's a little more room and maybe a little better notice. And I guarantee you, you'll have a full house because they will be there. There, there, there's just nobody in Medina County right now that's that's willing or wanting to pay more taxes. It's asinine. Yeah. Okay. Any other Thank you. Look at that four. When you go to your normal agenda, Mr. Martin, and you go to each agenda item, since this was legally supposed to be citizens' comments for the public hearing, when you go to the actual agenda, there should actually be comments for the agenda items. Is that not correct? Right. Thank you. I could, who's on the board and who are, are, are y'all on the board? All y'all on the board? I, I know you can answer that question. <laughs> that would be a Walmart question. I'm a board member. And you a board member? No, sir. I'm president. You're a board member, yes, sir. and you're a board member. So there's three board members here. So do you have a quorum? Yes. There's only four. Five oh, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. So discuss an action on adoption of the district 2024 proposed tax rate of no, zero of point. Budget, budget. What? We need the budget first. Oh, okay. Review and discuss the option and adopt the district's 24-25 fiscal year budget. Can you put the agenda back on the screen? Oops. Oh, sorry. Thank you. We're on number three now. Thank you. Yes. yes, number three. Okay, so public hearing is over with the uh, 729. Review and discuss and adopt the district's 24 25 fiscal year budget. Uh, so revisiting the salary piece, um, I know that we had some confusion on that at the last meeting after I looked at your worksheet uh, and sent it back to you. Where did that put us on our overall budget? Because I know that was part of the reason that we felt we needed to increase the tax rate was because uh, where we were coming out in a deficit budget situation. My computer may not So this was taken into account. Those, what you sent me. What I sent you. Yes. So that included the uh, two paramedics, two EMTs well, or basics, and then the additional four PRNs. So that, but that was the question, and so maybe you can answer that, Jason. So we had talked about 15 positions, I think, maybe 16. When we, when I got the, uh, well, when we got the information from Christy, it was 12 positions, two ambulances, 24 seven. How do we incorporate, are we incorporating part-timers to pick up shifts as we have people on leave or absent, absences, or are we bringing in full-time people to work 40 hours regardless of those absences? How does that work? So, the plan is is they will, it'll take 12 employees to staff both trucks full time, 24-7. Mm -hmm. If one of the full timers takes a leave, vacation, time off, the, the first step is to recruit or ask one of the part time employees to fulfill that shift to save the district overtime costs. Okay. If no part timers are available, then it would be an overtime. So but how do we get a number there? Because I, I just threw in four additional positions not knowing the intent of how to fill, fill absenteeism. 
because that's going to happen on a regular basis where sure. people are out sick, family reasons, whatever it might be, vacancies that are open for periods of time when we can't fill a position. So we can... How do we get to a number for that piece? Ideally, we should have enough part-timers to fulfill all shift or all positions for one shift. But what? But how do we budget that? Like, are we going to say every week we got to have three part-timers for a 24-hour shift? What? We got to put a number to it because I, I think I'm high with the assumption that it's going to cost us four people. 40 hours a week for 52 hours a week, which is sort of inflating the budget a little bit. But I didn't know how else to get there because I, I didn't know that process on how you would staff that. Yeah, so the staffing model would be the same as it would be for a full partner. So it would just be whatever their pay rate is for that part time. The district just wouldn't have the responsibility of the benefits. But over a course of a year, how do we get to a number? Um, Should it be one full time, like one full time salary for each bus, and that should cover any part timers? I think it would be appropriate to. Okay. Because uh, I did four, so should we cut it down to one per bus? One, one uh, unit per bus? I would say probably one FTE, full FTE per truck. Can you make that change? Because in my number, I was using two paras and two basic. So I don't know, is, is it going to be paras that we're trying to fill mm -hmm. most of the time? Usually the EMT spots are a lot easier to fulfill than the paramedics are. Than the paramedics. So maybe go with the two basic positions. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I can do some more research and ask some colleagues how they calculate uh, their PR in. What are we saying? 40 hours times the pair of was $27 an hour? To be competitive, yes. 27 times 52 weeks. So you could reduce it by 112,000, roughly. And times 118, about 130,000 with benefits. Well, I don't know your spreadsheet. That's the one you sent me. Mm -hmm. Where are your salaries? Where's your cell? Is it down here? This number can down there. Four six two. Right here. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is that one point four six two the cell? Then you save it. needs to be 
Allegiance only provided a bus and a half. They did not provide two full-time buses. And so, do we go back to a bus and a half? And then you the four part timers? No. No. Okay, so you're looking at 16, but four would have no benefits. And nobody from the management. Right. Management can also jump on an apparatus if needed. What's the estimated cost on those 12 employees? One point one three eight four six four. Our pay rate for paramedics is 25 to 27 an hour, depending on experience, and that is competitive with the other agencies around. And we're going to have how many paramedics, how many EMTs, and how many advanced? Six EMTs, four AEMTs, and six paramedics. Any of you spoken to the director of Ascosa County to find out how she often struggles to fulfill her or ambulances in her county? I am very familiar with Atascosa County EMS. Thank you. Just appreciate that for answering the question. And now we are learning. Had we jumped to this part yeah, of the other, we would not be in red faces we are right now. I appreciate the answer. Yes, sir. He did not answer our questions. It got everybody riled up. We didn't have to go there. But he did say, as they went through the bud, uh, budget line item, they could have done that earlier in the meeting also. Okay. I have one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, these uh, travel meetings for 25000 what is that? Travel like to where? So EMT, so as myself, is we're we're the ones that are certified. We have to keep CEs 
throughout the year. So that is the send any of our staff members that we have that are paramedics, intermediates, or EMTs to go to training because we have to have a certain amount of CE. So as myself as a basic, I have to have 84 hours of CEs to keep my patch. This gentleman right here has to have 144 CEs to keep his patch. So that $25,000 is also to, to include sending that staff members to different classes, different conferences, but also as your ESD, they have to take classes as well. How much, could be, how much could be done internally? Because I know this is the same thing at the school board. I can only speak to my experience as an elected official, but we've adopted from going out of town for conferences in the last five years, unlike most school districts, because we are trying to be good stewards of our tax money. And if our, if our own employees are going without going out of town for conferences, it's difficult for us to do so. So we do our in house training, still receiving those same education. I will divert that to the gentleman. So there is a lot of the CE and required training that we can do in house. In plan to, especially for staff. In addition to being an administrator, there's additional certificates. Those certificates, you do have to go to specific courses for that material. Can you do them online? Some of them you can, some of them you cannot. Even the ones that you do online still have the full same practices if you were in person, right? So some of those things we cannot help, right? But as far as um, the medical CEs, I can award CEs for any hour that I teach. I can also teach any of my employees in certain topics, in certain fields, um, and I can award them CEs. So that is an internal program that we can do, but like I said, there's additional certifications that we require that we do have to go to specific places for specific courses. So uh, what was your total budget for last year, your fiscal year last year? What did you find on the contract one? Mm -hmm. What did you find on the contract? We're supposed to have two ambulances. We're supposed to have two full-time ambulances? So, the, so why? The part of the part of the yeah, the total budget. I'm, I'm sorry, we're going to come back to this direction. Just real quick, because I want to make sure we have this conversation. So, all through this process, on discussions of whether or not to go private, or to keep it with allegiance, we were told as board members that this was a unit and a half that we were getting from allegiance. Now, George and I are the newest members to this board, and we had no reason to doubt that's what we were getting. Are you telling me now that you were wrong and that we're getting two full-time buses? They, they decided to keep the second truck instead of it being a peak hour truck, which is what we did. What do you mean they? How did they do that on their own? The contract, yeah. They, they they gave it money making, so they decided to go ahead and do two trucks for the price. Of How do we not know that as a board? I didn't know. That, uh, that was in the newspaper. Well, actually, this board here announced that when there was questions, that's the thing about this. That was in the newspaper. There was a, that there was two full time trucks. But he's only on the long But that's and not. We've all been aware there's two full time trucks. Mm -hmm. Because no. The last time I was here at the station, after hours, the truck from the town, you came in here, they parked the truck and the crew left. How many runs are we making today? So, wait, I'm sorry, we're going to, I'm not ready to move off because, again, this community is upset, and obviously, rightfully so, because they knew more than we did as, as the board about how many trucks we had and the availability that they were both 24-7 to them? It's all just changed. When? When we told them that we were leaving them? I mean, how? The original contract that was signed with Allegiance was a truck and a half. One peak truck was, it was anywhere between 12 to 16 hours. That, that discretion was given to Allegiance as far as that second truck. So ESD at the time when we went to Allegiance, it was one and a half trucks. 
but that 16 hour truck had to be in Natalia at all times and then come back over here. That means that they had to be in Natalia by, I think it was nine o'clock, because they were here to do nine to nine. So that truck had to come here, get the truck and be in Natalia by nine, which is there at Natalia's station. So did they not increase their billing to us based on? Did they communicate it to anybody besides Mr. Borsier? Well, he was the chief, so he was not any of us. And when we had these conversations with Allegiance, letting them know we we're looking at this as an avenue, at any time did it come up that they were running two full-time trucks and that they could do it at the same cost? I'm going to give you a report every month. Yes, but it's not a financial report. It's not a financial report. It doesn't show that there has It just has a number of calls. It just gives us a number of calls in the area. So the expectation industry-wide would be that upon your contract renewal, which would be at the same time it terminates, is that they're going to up your cost. We don't know that. But did you get a bid from them to see if they actually upped it to compare before we went to this? I mean, right now they're over two hundred twenty thousand. They didn't. Yeah. Uh, they didn't change until after so we started. So, because their contract would be over January. on October first, we would so have to send it out because ESCs are required to get three bids. So, we would have to send it out. So, no, we would not know whether or not they would increase. But in the previous contract, it says that it would increase three percent every year. In the previous contract. That's still a lot less. I'm not disagreeing with anything, y'all. I'm just answering the question. So why not go out and do this before taking this step and see what the next year was going to be with them? Can I just talk about these? They've been providing two full-time trucks for quite a while. He's been over the last month or two. He's my neighbor. Yeah, well, we never said that it was that. Just that was the original contract he signed. The original contract was one full-time truck, 24 hours. Read the contract you sent me. He said two. I just showed Tony two hours. Read the date. Yeah, Read the date. You, We're in our second contract. Yeah. When you We're told me contract. it was one and a half, you, you told me that. You gave, I asked you for the current contract. That's what you that is correct. But of the original contract. Okay, which well, is the second contract. We're in the second when contract. So when did the original when did that contract come out? Where did we put the book up? When did that contract? You didn't know, Christy, they had two, and you didn't have people up here? You're the, you're the coordinator, you didn't know there was people here? When both animals were running on your side or so? Wow. So, so let me let me get the contractual piece straight, because you keep saying the original contract had two units. No, no, no. I'm going to through a whole book. The original contract gave us what? The original contract, one and a half trucks. And then when did the contract change? Change. This was 2019. So that contract then comes back and says we're going to get two full-time trucks? They just said on their own, right? They just put on their own. Or they said they could have up to two two, two full-time trucks. I get a good idea to punt to redo this. Let me get my friends and lock them up. Did y'all get it all straight? And you might go back to the city of Natalia and tell them what you're doing too. So oh, no, you don't have to worry about that. You'll know by midnight. Well, I do appreciate the board asking questions, the gentleman on the end. So. Well, believe me, I'm, I'm upset too because I feel uh, misled in this venture because I was one of the biggest challengers to this move with a lot of concerns about making this move. And it was really led to believe we were doing it because we could get two full-time trucks to this community that were being underserved. And I really have an issue with that. I do.
postpone the adopting of the budget. Cardiac resuscitation auto posts. No, they are not on Allegiance's apparatus. No. They don't have the on there. They have, they have, they have their own. Of course, that's what we're saying. Yeah. They were providing that. They don't have um, the auto resuscitation devices or the ventilators. And how many of those are you going to get for fifteen thousand? We have one for each truck, ma'am. You're going to get two of each for 50000 Yes. Are they used? No, they're brand new. Okay. Can I ask one more? It's kind of, kind of budget related. What does the administrative staff that you're proposing for the new service, what experience do they have in administrating a service like this? I personally have 16 years of EMS service, op operationally and administratively. I also have experience in emergency management. I also have experience in EMS education. In the billing and the... Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's, that's a big question. But how billing, the billing is going to an outside source. Yeah. Okay. They, they do the collections. They file all the claims. And they keep up with all the laws. And then they get a percentage of their collections. And to further answer your question, ma'am, I have 24 years in EMS and also have a bachelor's in emergency management. This question here, ma'am. I, uh, I know. I know both of you. Uh, a lot of times you said something just now, made me curious. So if this tax does go through, like, you know, and you make a run to my house to haul me to wherever, are you still in the building? Or is that tax taking care of that? Because the police department doesn't send us here. So uh, I can't speak for this board because we're not operational and we're not we're not running calls. Right, I understand. I can say that but you see my point. most most districts that provide their own service operationally will try and collect from insurance providers if they have it. If they do not have insurance or there's an additional cost that insurance does not cover, a lot of that can be eaten up by what the resident pays in taxes. There you go. Now that does not always become the case, and I can't speak for the board because they haven't had that discussion. But if you're a resident driving through, you're not paying taxes to the district. Right. Or I'm sorry, if you're a, a traveler driving through and well, something happens, that. right, you're not paying taxes to the district. Okay. Thank you for the answer. In our budget, we did not allow for collections from citizens. Thank you for the answer. I'm just curious. If I can just comment on something too, it's good to be one of the, uh, you know, one of the people in there commented about how much stuff costs. Myself just got back from a conference, which is that I said all the prices on stuff that you can buy monitors is going up. Oh yeah. And there's nothing that we can do to stop it. It's that's just how the manufacturers come. And that goes to the soul monitors, to everything that gentleman there is talking about. It's going up. Well, the same with training and license. Well, that's correct. Well, you're training. You're training. And that's training. And that's so, yes. Mirrors t code. I can explain the goal thing. To, to the specific standards. Standards. Okay. So the goal, yeah. the reason why we're getting it at that price is because we have a we have signed a maintenance agreement with Zoll. So let's say in two years, instead of having to go out and buy another another um, cardiac monitor, they will upgrade the cardiac monitor to the new cardiac monitor. That was the reason why we did what we did with that portion of it. So that way we're always where the medicine is at. 
We're, we're always up to date with the medicine. So if we're, we have these uh, X-series zoles right now. So let's say they come up with 15, like life facts. They come up with 15. They will exchange our cardiac monitors at no cost to us to give us the upgrade to provide service for you guys. But that's the reason why it's the 50,000 because it's kind of like a lease program. But that's 50,000 for three pieces of equipment. That is correct, ma'am. It's six total pieces. Well, I mean, 20, and you, you budget at 50,000, but it was, if you divide it, it would be 25,000 for three pieces of equipment. It didn't, it seemed like you were under budget to me. Well, I, mean, I still think, think the biggest problem, though, is for Mr. Zamora to be on the board and not know, mm -hmm. and for him to not apologize for my frustration at you earlier, I was, would assume, <clears throat> because it's not right for one or two board members to be totally blindfolded by this. And I think it's nothing against the two folks sitting in uniform. Like I said, I've known Mr. Mark my whole life. But the whole big picture here, regardless of opinions on how talented these two folks are in uniform, there's no doubt they probably are. But the biggest picture here is what does everybody get for more money when there has not been transparency on the two ambulances? And right now there is no benefit to having a budget of two point something million that is not going to provide us anything different than what we're currently getting. And no offense, but we're also putting out a man of a director spot that has been in this community for over 60 years of his life. <laughs> well respected. He had the opportunity to apply. For I understand. Him. I understand. He had that opportunity. I understand. He didn't get him out. I understand. But I mean, he's been very transparent with the community and at meetings when it comes to calls and increases and needs. I mean, it's just been constant communication. There's been article after article and article. And he was, paper. And he was one of the two first paramedics in this. County. And, and, like and I said, he paid out of his the, pocket. The bottom line is, is the reason why I got to be there. No, I understand. I understand, Tony. But the bottom line, Tony, is if you had, if y'all had not posted that, notice, that public notice in the paper, and that hadn't been caught by KK, nobody would have known. And that, that's the most concerning thing. In, in regards to the agenda, I believe Mr. Moore called for question on item number three. Number three. Okay, post up. If I could make a real simple suggestion, you might consider putting a couple of people uh, on the board just to get public input. I know that the, that the uh, board members are, are of the community, but a couple of civilians probably wouldn't hurt it. They don't have the right to vote. They don't have to, but they might just be there to get feedback. That's just a suggestion. You buy them to your hearing, or whatever you call it, your meetings when you're putting this together. And I'm not in love. We got a vacant seat. We're going to have one thing. I will send you the application. Can we move on? Positions that are proposed in the budget already been hired for? One. Two of them actually are. Why are we going from one director to two when the previous companies come up with one with two stations? Operational span of control. If something happens to me or I'm out of town, somebody else will be here to help run operations and administration. And you mind me asking what size department you came from, sir? Or what county? I've come from many, many departments. Um, from the size of ones very similar to this. this, this is the same size agency that I started my career with. And I've worked all the way up to 10, 15 ambulances and more at any given position on one shift. And it's not for you because you don't know the history here. You don't know, you know, or maybe you do. I'm sure you've heard through the grapevine. But there's just a lot dating back. I'm four years old, and this has been a topic of conversation my entire life. And, and like I said, the the increase helps the town, Natalia, but it hurts Natalia. And like I said, my biggest issue is five people, including not counting the mayor, were not told the truth. Period. And that's not you. You have nothing to do with that. Or maybe you did, but six people who are elected officials who have a ton of pool in our little town who get out of vote. And now county commissioner, retired elected officials, retired elected officials, a sitting city councilman and a newspaper owner are not happy. And I appreciate Mr. Zamora for doing the right thing and for postponing that. But guys, we gotta have transparency because there's a lot of loud mouths in this room and a petition will go straight to the county commissioners and we'll get it stopped. And it's just that simple. Facebook works miracles. And we don't want to do that, but we can't hide stuff, guys. None of us are allowed to do it in our political office. And we don't want to go the whole public information request and ask for emails or text messages, because who knows what we would find. 
I have a question. Why were bids not secured before this increase was decided upon? Well, I mean, you don't even know what it was going to cost, but you're willing to spend $2.8 million. It kind of makes sense to get those bids and say, oh, hey, wait a minute, this is really expensive. Maybe we can do it better ourselves. Or, hey, wait a minute, we got these bids and it's going to cost us five times the amount to do it ourselves. It almost sounds like the positions were created. <clears throat> That's why we went that way. Was nothing the against you, so I don't know you. Was the budget ever amended for, for this fiscal year for those positions? Because on here it's all zero expense. Right. So I am the higher positions. I am the, so if you look under mine, I'm the administrator. Okay. Gotcha. So I've been with them since 2010. So okay. I am a contract of labor. Okay. That means I would, so I've been with the company for, for the longest. I've, everybody sitting at this table actually. No, for the district. For the district. For okay. I have been the coordinator since 2010. So, so, my, so mine, is, and mine is actually under the administrator. She is the new one. So, so do, these, do these salary estimations include the cost of benefits for full time employees? Yeah. So you're hired as the coordinator now or the deputy? No. I, I'm the district coordinator. The district I've coordinator. been the district coordinator since 2010. Okay, so you've been hired as the new district coordinator. Still a different salary, 11000 to 65000 difference. But I'm also a contract labor, so that I would be full-time. So now you're full-time, so you're contract labor. I would go full-time, yes. You will? Or yes. You I am serve currently a <coughs> contractor. No so you haven't been hired, you are out of I'm confused. She is still currently contract labor. The proposed budget salary for her position would be to hire her full time. If she gets hired for that position. Right. But she's not hired now. Okay. okay. All this happened transparently trying to figure out what's going on. I think all this happened September 30th or October. So y'all just said two people have been hired, so who's the second one then? If she hasn't been hired yet. She is still an employee. She asked how many employees we had. We have two employees. So they asked who's been hired since the change began and how many employees have been hired. Oh, I'll say the two. I'm sorry, we missed it. I should do this. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. We protect you, Tony, because next time I'm going to closed session before 7 o'clock, and you always have to state the Texas government code on why you're going into closed session. There has to be calls. It can't be just to go, especially not before a posted meeting. <laughs> just trying to protect us. Follow my attorneys advice. No, I understand. But I, I would check your attorney on promise. Peace. The utmost in the state. That's funny. I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were So the training doesn't cover Robert's rule of order when y'all got all these trainings every year? Too old. On how to connect a meeting? Too old. <laughs> it does. Okay. Okay. So just choose not to follow them. Okay. Just checking. Sorry. So now what? So we, we can't do the but we can't do the tax rate. Right Everything's postponed. Is that what? So allegiance. No report. He sent us the report. I didn't get it. I didn't get the report. Hmm? I didn't get the report. Yeah. Okay. Can you send them back? Uh, Did you get the report? I said this report was in it. Where are we? You must postpone all the meetings. Tell me you need to say something about number four. I'll just read it. So, yes, it's been postponed. So we're going to have an emergency meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for your time. Uh, well, we can't. I would. I would just post my comments. Yes, meeting, so everything's okay. going to get tabled because if we don't have the budget approved, then we can't. And then one question then, what is the retro pay for somebody on the sixty item number eleven? The review discusses the situation of retro pay. We need to go into closed session is the next item. So what is that one about?
Yeah. If you're regardless of budget, you can't talk about that. No, but I asked for information to be shared with me about the organization and all those things. We need so just say go. Huh? Go into closed session. Please okay, so we're going to go into closed session. Okay. It's item number seven on the agenda. So we'll go over there. Or we're going to go to this agenda. Well, everything else, because, because we didn't approve the budget, everything else is going to be tabled until we approve the budget. Can I ask one last question? Yes. On the on the uh, ambulance study, is, is this going to be a new ambulance service? It is so that means owned by the district. So do you have to set up a bond also, like everybody? Knows? No, ma'am, because we're a government entity. I see. Okay, that's why I didn't see it on the budget. Yes, ma'am. So if if the rest of the agenda is tabled. Will it be at your next regular meeting, or will there be a we'll special have to, meeting? We'll have, have a special meeting. Okay. Only, only other question I have, Tony, is there, are these the EMSs that Allegiance was using, or these are brand new ones that looks like they'll just purchase? They're brand new ones. They buy them bought. I, I just don't get why I would purchase these prior to passing a budget, prior to a starting a contract terminating. I mean, you had two board members here that had no clue of the truth and the facts. I mean, that seems really crazy to buy two ambulances prior to passing a budget. So if that budget doesn't pass, what happens to those two ambulances? Right now, ambulances are taking 36, 18 to 36 months to get. So this has been... You also can't get it. I have to. I have to. I have to just send it to you. It's the uh, application that is sent by uh, Judge Boots. So it will require an application and a resume. I can get that. I can get it. Yeah. 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 It's on a piece of paper. Yeah. Come from the judge. Jerry, I have one. I'd have to print it. Application for this work. I'll get it.